Are you guys still together? I still love her. Are you guys still together? I'm mad about some things. <laughs> she's, I guess she's not mad. Jason almost called 911 on me last night. <laughs> <laughs> there it is! <laughs> 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 uh, ooh. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. So what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. And a big part of our emotional and mental well-being is the relationships that we're in. So make sure that you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So, as some of you know, I'm in the middle of writing my book, Rewire Your Anger, and I just posted a different video. I was about to start writing, but then I saw I had a bunch of tweets and DMs and messages on Discord like, yo, you gotta watch this new Jason Nash video. So I'm like, all right, I guess I'll check it out. So I decided to record this before getting back to my book and writing it. <laughs> so anyways, before I get started, if you're new to my channel, this cha this this video, or my videos, they aren't for Trisha Paytas. They are not for Jason Nash. There's a very slim chance they will see my video. This video is for you, okay? If you can relate to the relationship that Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash are in, this is for you. If you have friends who are in a relationship like Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash, this is for you, all right? So I've done some videos in the past on Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash, and one of my most recent ones was them doing couples therapy with Katie Morton, which was cool, kind of. I'll touch back on that in a minute. But this is such a toxic relationship, and I'm going to give some tough love, and I want you all to keep in mind, okay? And please, this is my disclaimer for the video. My recommendations, are for this specific scenario, okay? And what I mean by this specific scenario, things have always been bad, all right? They haven't been dating too long. Things have always been bad. They don't have any children together. So that's what I mean. And I'm saying that because pretty soon I'm gonna give some of my thoughts and suggestions and some of you who have been in a relationship for like 20 years and you just started fighting, you're gonna like question what I'm saying. This isn't for you, okay? This is for people in this specific situation. But anyways, let's get started. It's gonna be bad if I go to Trisha's. It's gonna be really something I don't wanna do. I don't wanna go there. We're gonna leave, we're gonna leave on bad terms. It's gonna be all, all last night because I'm leaving. I'm not staying there and I'm not even gonna Stay there for the camera and be like, so you can end your bit, so you can cut from this to me staying there. Bye, Jason. <laughs> that. If you, I'm not doing it. If you if you get too angry, you can just leave, and you, I'm not gonna stop you. I won't stop you. I, it's not that I'm gonna get too angry. I'm just like, I don't want to be back in that. So yeah, like that first clip. This is what I'm talking about. Like, if you're consistently fighting, end it. End it, okay? If you just started in a relationship, I made a video a long time ago about how this person's not going to change. Something that I see so many people do in relationships is that you get into a new relationship, it's terrible from the beginning, but you are so afraid of being alone that you stay in that relationship and you're just waiting for that person to change. Like if you are watching this video, feel free to comment down below. How many of you have wasted months or years in a relationship hoping the other person would change? hoping that the relationship would get better, right? Like, like I said, this is different for like married couples who have been together for like a decade or years or whatever. You might just be hitting a rough patch, but in Jason and Trisha's specific scenario, this has been wrong from the very start. They have been fighting from the very start. What I mentioned in one of my first videos about Jason Nash and Trisha Paytas, which is also interesting. A lot of, a lot of, no, not a lot. I won't say that. Some people are like, why aren't you giving Jason uh, Nash as much crap as Trisha? That is all perspective. Because both of these are two very, very broken individuals. And the analogy I always give my clients is, never in the history of logic has it worked where you take two glasses, you shatter them on the ground, and you scoop them together and say, okay, this'll work. Like, that's what people try to do all the time. They're like, oh wait, you're broken? I'm broken too. You know what? We could probably have a really healthy relationship together. That's not how it works. Now, um, one of the, the arguments I get all the time is people say, 
oh, oh, so you're saying broken people should never get in a relationship? No, we're all broken. But when somebody is in the midst of this thing and they're not working on themselves and they haven't healed just a little bit, that is extremely selfish. It is extremely selfish. I say this from personal experience. As somebody who stayed single for over a year and a half when I first got sober, I knew that it would be selfish of me to pull somebody into a relationship with me even though I hadn't worked on myself yet. But so many of us are so selfish that we're more concerned about being alone than we are worried about ruining this other person's life. I don't know, sometimes I don't like being surprised going to someone's house. Let's cut this going on. <laughs> hey David, everything's happy here. It's a harmonious uh, situation. Oh my god, he's so dramatic. Why? I'm not being dramatic. You're being so dramatic. Here we go. Okay, this I sent some weird I would tell you. Um, Alright, so I just want to point out this body language right here. The body language in this right here. So, something that a lot of people say, and if you don't believe me, check the comments. Come back in a couple days and check the comments. A lot of people will say, Jason Nash and Trisha Paytas, this is all fake. Their fights are fake. This is fake, 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 fake. They do it for views. And, like, here's the thing, alright? The first thing is, body language doesn't lie, okay? The best actors in the world, like, people like... Brad Pitt, I don't know why he's the first one who came came to mind, but like, they cannot even fake body language that well, okay? So you are giving people way too much credit. The second thing I'll say is, you give people way too much credit. Like, if you are somebody who thinks that Trisha and Jason are faking all of this, you have lived a very sheltered life. And I say this as somebody who has not only been a crazy person, but has surrounded myself with crazy people and toxic individuals, all right? This is normal in their lives. So. I, it's my assumption that people think that this is all staged because they've never actually met people like this in real life. But trust me, they exist. I used to be like this. But anyways, back to the body language. You see throughout like the first half of this conversation, like this scene, if you will, Jason Nash's arms are covering his stomach, okay? This means, okay, this means that the brain is reacting to feeling threatened, to feeling worried. The reason your arms cross and fold like this is because all of your vital organs are in this area. So when someone's crossing their hands over their stomach, that typically means they're nervous and they're uncomfortable. So guys, by the way, if you're out there at the club or at the bar hitting on a girl and her hands are crossed over your stomach, take that as a sign that she's probably not interested and she might be a little bit afraid of you. So one of my biggest concerns one of my biggest concerns with people in general is that they're wasting time in therapy. Um, so a lot of you who follow my channel, you, you hear me say like, get therapy, get therapy. Like, you, like, if you have the resources to get therapy, do it. Like one of my biggest gripes with YouTubers is when I see these YouTubers who are making hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars a year, complaining about their mental health, but they aren't allocating any time towards therapy. Now, Jason and Trisha are both people who have gone to therapy many times, and it really bums me out because they do videos with Katie, and like, it almost makes me feel like they're just doing it for views. They're not doing it to help themselves. And that's, that, like, whatever. Like, I am an optimist, and I think that the videos that they do talking about therapy and stuff might encourage somebody in their audience to get therapy. That is a bonus. But for them specifically, it seems like they're wasting their time, okay? And here's why I say that. I follow them, I follow a lot of YouTubers. And what I'm always doing, as somebody who works in mental health treatment and watching somebody, are you taking what I'm teaching you and using it, right? Because if not, you're wasting your time. Like, I work in drug and alcohol treatment. I've seen people come back five, six, seven, eight times, right? And then maybe their insurance runs out and they can't come back to treatment and they're begging and saying, I need help, I need help. And it's like, how much more can I teach you? Like, how much more can I teach you? Like, the, the, the order of therapy, like kind of like the lifetime of therapy, is like you go in there and you first, it's, it's time to figure out the root of your problems, right? Where is this coming from? Is it coming from your childhood? Is it coming from your parents? Is it coming from trauma? What is this coming from? Is it coming from mental illness? What is that? Okay, here's the root of the problem. Here are coping skills to work with that. Maybe it's me medication. Maybe it's uh, DBT or CBT. Maybe it's support groups. Maybe it's meetings. Maybe it's, I don't know. It's so many different things. But if you leave that office and you don't do anything Thing with it, you are wasting your time, you're wasting your money. This is why I say we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. Like, if you're just going to therapy to vent about how terrible the world is, how terrible your relationship is, and you're not doing anything, you're not taking any of that advice and using it out in the real world, then you are wasting a bunch of time, all right? Like, when I always teach people in treatment is that 
the groups that we do, the classes that we do, the one-on-one -on -one sessions that we do, those are not the important part of treatment. The most important part of treatment is before and after. How are you dealing with the people in your life? How are you dealing with your parents? How are you dealing with your husband or wife or significant other? How are you dealing with your coworkers? How are you dealing with your siblings? Like, you could sit there and listen to me talk in front of a group for hours on end, but if you're not taking what I teach you and using it out in the real world, it is a waste of time, all right? So that that is just one gripe that I have because I see some YouTubers who are always talking about therapy, but I don't see them saying like, oh, my therapist taught me this grounding technique, or oh, my therapy gave me this really cool journaling exercise. Like, I never see that. Like, when you watch Jason and Trisha throughout this video, neither one of them say, hey, honey, remember what the therapist told us? Right? David, it was, it was so scary that at one point I actually just started laughing. Like I, she almost won me over with how crazy it was. Like I almost went to her side, to the dark side, and, was, and just completely flipped and was like, all right, Let's just be crazy together. <laughs> but then I stopped and I was like, no! That right there is proof of not only how crazy Jason is, but how crazy I used to be. Like I had to include this clip because like I got the chills. I just got the chills again thinking about it. Like this is why I was in no position to be in a relationship because the crazier a woman acted, the more I was attracted to her. Like you guys, I hope you're paying attention to me. That is not how normal people think. The crazier you act, the more emotionally or, or, or verbally or even potentially physically abusive you are, the more I'm attracted to you. Like, we gotta pump the brakes. Like, this is where self-awareness comes in. This is, why we gotta, this is where we gotta sit down and say, whoa, this is not normal, this is not healthy. I should not be attracted to somebody for acting crazy, right? Like, there is a story that I'm not gonna share right now, but it was one of my biggest moments of clarity, and I'm like, I am messed up. Because this woman who I was talking to, we weren't even like officially dating, and she would just act completely bananas, and I'm like, I love this so much. And then I'm like, wait, this is not healthy, right? And luckily me and her never got into a relationship. And now I'm dating the beautiful Tristan. <laughs> but anyways, I want you to step back and take a look at that in your own life. Are you like extremely attracted to people who are emotionally abusive or verbally abusive? By the way, I will link up in the info card a video I did a while back as a follow up to my one of my first Jason Nash and Trisha Paytas videos. The, the video was called Why You Date who you date. It is a worksheet that my mom, who's a psychologist, um, gave to me and I use it in treatment. She uses it with her clients. So if you're curious as to why you are attracted to these things, make sure you go check out that video. Wait, why did you almost call the police? I'm not gonna say. She can say if she wants. I'm not gonna throw her under the bus. I wasn't, literally didn't do anything. I mean, what she did like wasn't that bad. I was blocking the door. <laughs> <laughs> For an hour and a half. I sat there. He went into that bedroom and I just sat there. But then... She sat right here. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. She sat here like a f***ing prison guard. And I was like, Trisha, get out of the way. I'm going home. I want to go home. I need some time to myself. She's like, no. No. Holy s***. Is like, this true? Yeah. And this, this scene right here is why I titled the video, I'm worried about Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash. Like, that's not cool. Like this, that, that's not cool. Like, Trisha has admitted that she's been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Um, Jason has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And when it gets to a point where people are like blocking doors and stuff like that, especially based on the fact that they shouldn't be dating anyways, like, like that's not, that's not good, it's not cool, it is not healthy in any way, shape, or form. I almost made a video talking about how I think David Dobrik is enabling both of them, but I don't think he is. I think David, David is really real about the situation, but he's a good listener as well, and um, he tries to lighten up situations. If you want me to make a video about David Dobrik as the friend of somebody with a crazy, crazy friends who have that relationship, let me know. Because a lot of you watching this are not in a crazy relationship, but you're observing your friend in a crazy relationship. So if you want me to make that video, let me know. But anyways, if it gets to this point where people are blocking doors and you think that you have to call 911 and all of this, like, just let you know, that is not healthy. 
all right? And it blows my mind watching these two sit down with somebody like Katie Morton and just breeze over all of those things. They're like, yeah, we just kind of argue every now and then. Like, no. Another thing that will waste your time in therapy, like some, some people ask me, like, what's your best tip for my first session of therapy? Be honest. Be 1,000% honest. Tell them everything. Tell them every single thing on earth, all right? You have an hour with that person. I know a lot of us like to, like to tiptoe around and like feel the therapist out and let them feel us out a little bit. No, go in there and say, listen, I'm in a relationship. It seems crazy as hell. I need you to tell me if this is normal. I need you to tell me if I need to get out. Like that's what a therapist is for. Like don't go in there sugarcoating and BS. Save that for social media and the, the, the view you wanna give other people of what your relationship looks like, how you're all happy and everything's amazing. But when you go into a therapy session, tell them the God's honest truth, okay? Anyways, like this got me pretty heated. Like a huge part of mental health is your relationship, guys. And like people are sitting around, millions of people are watching Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash. And I think, I think a lot of people are justifying their insane toxic relationships by watching people like this. And that's one of the reasons why I make these videos. Because again, this video isn't for Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash, this video is for you, all right? But anyways, let me know down in the comments below, like your thoughts, your experience, toxic relationships. Let Answer the question I asked you at the beginning of this video. Have you wasted months or even years with somebody waiting around for them to change? All right, let me know down in the comments. Anyways, I need to get back to writing my book. So if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I'm making a ton of videos. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all awesome. There is a brand new video up over on Patreon, exclusive content if you want to get access to it, click or tap right there. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.